Welcome to Ohio FFA Career Connection. Throughout this series, we will explore just a few of the vast career opportunities in Ohio agriculture. Whether you want to work on a farm or in an office, laboratory, field, or classroom, FFA prepares us to be successful. Together, we'll get to know various professionals and learn how we can jumpstart our future careers while still in FFA. Let's get started. I'm excited to chat with an employee in the Torchmate division of Lincoln Electric, Iggy Sendejas. Thanks for joining me today, Iggy. Thanks for having me, Jake. So let's start talking about your background. How did you come to work in agriculture and more specifically the welding industry? So it's actually a little bit of a long journey, I guess you could say. I uh, started construction, so uh, concrete, framing, different things like that with my stepdad in, in high school. I think I was maybe a freshman or sophomore in high school when I started working with him. Uh, and then I also took shop class in high school. So I took wood shop, welding, uh, auto shop, electrical, auto. I did a lot of the shop classes because I uh, liked working with my hands. I competed in Vika a little bit here and there in the welding portion. Uh, and I kind of got just roped into that. I only competed, I think one, maybe two years. Didn't go too far in the Vika itself. I guess it's skills now but uh, was lucky enough to actually get compete and actually see what that really entailed the competition and really know that I was not that good like I thought I was, right? There's always somebody better than me, which taught me that uh, you can always improve. You're never good enough really in, in this type of industry. You can always better yourself with new technology, new skills, um, even in the same field. So welding, I always... Um, after high school, I, um, went to school, didn't really know what I wanted to do. I really wanted to fly airplanes. Um, but then ended up going in to do some, uh, meteorological. So atmospheric sciences type things like that. Did some electrical, did some coding in, in school, eventually ended up getting a job working in a, uh, cabinet shop, working with wood. Since I was always working with wood in high school as a kid, um, I liked it. And then one day the, uh, owner of the company came up and he said, Hey, you know how to weld. Right. And I was like, well, it's been a few years, but I, yes, I do know how to weld. And he said, okay, go over to the shop, make this part for me. I made the part after doing some practice weld since I was a little rusty. And he said, all right, good. That's good. Make a few of them. And then he's like, you're the, you're my metal guy. Now there's a CNC machine in the next room. I need you to learn how to use it. So I then started YouTubing and talking to some people online and figured out how to use a CNC plasma machine and ran a, a metal shop for three or four years. And then the shop started to slow down a lot. And I started to get really antsy and not knowing where, if that shop was going to be there in a few years. And at the time I was also taking some, uh, trying to further my education in welding by going to my uh, local community college, getting, um, certifications for MIG welding, stick welding, started doing some TIG welding. And one day I was like, you know what? I'm just going to see if there's some other jobs out there. And literally same day, I walk into a shop, hand my resume in and he's like, Hey, you know how to TIG weld. Can you do stainless? And I, I was like, yes. And he's like, cool. Can you start tomorrow? And I was like, Oh, it's a little bit too fast. I got to at least tell my other boss that I'm going to be leaving the job. But unfortunately, that other job didn't tell me that it was a, not a full-time job. It wasn't for an extended period of time. It was just for the singular st uh, stainless steel weld welding job that he wanted me to do. So then they laid me off. And I was like, oh, my God, what am I going to do, right? I was lost. I was still going to school a little bit. I had a little side job, but it wasn't enough to pay the bills. So then I started shopping my resume around. And luckily, I landed with uh, Lincoln Electric. So it was Lincoln Electric Torchmate. Um, and I started at their division welding up the table. So I was making the machines um, from top to bottom. Eventually, I started to move myself into like an R&D fabricator. So I actually made new machines. So a machine that's never been left the line before. I got to make brand new ones. I thought it was super cool. I kind of get bored doing the same thing all the time. I, I'm sure a lot of people get this, but... If I do the same thing over and over again, like I do a, like a factory line building the same machine over, 
I get very bored. Um, so that's why it helped to, to be able to build some of these newer machines that haven't been built before um, due to the engineering drawings. And then after about a year and a half, I think, I was able to, there was a, a position, job position open for a traveling technician. So luckily I had gone through these college classes and ended up uh, doing some random things that had electrical in there. I'm very curious. I like to troubleshoot different things. Shortly after high school, I started building my own computers. Um, so electrical side, things like that, I was always interested in. And um, the technician job I ended up getting. So funny story on this. I actually, as a welder, I mean, I wasn't customer facing or anything like that. You might not picture it now, but I had a beard that was probably eight or 10 inches long, right? Still, still a short hair, but big beard. And uh, when I came in for the job, so the, the company torch made the manager at the time asked if I wanted to do the interview around like lunchtime or something. And I was like, you know what, can I, uh, uh, can we do it after work? around 3 30 or so and they're like yeah not sure no problem so i i ran home really quick on my motorcycle asked my roommate's girlfriend to iron a shirt for me took a shower shaved my beard off clean shaven like i am now and i walk into the building and the the secretary at the front say, she's like oh, can i help you and i was like no i know where, exactly where i'm going she's like oh my god you know one of those things and i walk into the office and the manager is like oh wow you're serious about this and i was like i i always take work seriously um, I mean, this is just how I prove it. And I mean, since this is going to be a customer facing da, 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 da. So I ended up getting the position and, uh, I've been travel. I've traveled the world. I've gone, they've sent me to, so I've been to 48 States or sorry, 42 States. I need eight States left to be all 50. I've been to, uh, not including the U S four different countries, um, Europe, Asia, Canada would be and the two countries in Asia, one in Europe and Canada would be the four countries. Um, which, so I've got to tr see a lot of different things. Um, and I'm really proud to be able to, and, and lucky to be able to have experienced those things. But, uh, it's as my job has progressed, I've been, been able to do the several different things. So I used to be just the on-site technician. I've then evolved into being, um, uh, more of a trainer. So I would train, um, a, a large classroom of people. And if anybody ever looks up Torchmate, I have also kind of um, got into the niche of being, uh, doing all of our digital media. So I do, I'm more or less the face. If you've looked up Torchmate, you've probably seen some commercials with me on there. Um, we look, we also do any of the maintenance videos that, that people would watch or anything like that. So I've re really been able to expand my uh, job title, I guess. And then, uh, Recently, I just got a, another uh, job promotion or in the, in the company to where I'm an application specialist. So now, since I've been working with customers for so long, I know what they expect out of the machines or what they were, were expecting, maybe didn't get out of machines. Um, I'm now the uh, application specialist where I'm more of a checkpoint from in between R&D and the customer itself to where I could say that this machine may, may not actually live up to what we expected or what a customer would see, and then maybe be able to add features or maybe move some things around in machines uh, to make it more customer facing, customer friendly, easy to use, things like that. So that's kind of my journey from beginning to kind of where I am now. Iggy, it is clear that you are very committed uh, to growth in your career and are, are always learning. How do you think students can demonstrate to their employer that they're committed to this position uh, and then they want further advancement in, in positions, but also just skills in general? Uh, well, it's hard to show a new employer that you are willing and, you know, really have the drive to better yourself. But I know that my, from my experience, I can only show existing employers. So once I get that job, um, I try to show that I am trying to better myself, help the company, things like that. Um, as an example, when I first got the job at uh, Torchmate, Lincoln Cutting Systems, um, we had these brand new Lincoln machines because Lincoln had just purchased Torchmate. Uh, they were the C300 machines and I was using them. I'd never used them before. And some guys just said, okay, this is how you set it. And this is how you go. Cause it was a spray transfer machine. Um, and I 
started reading the manual over lunch and stuff like that. And then I asked my welding manager, um, can I take an hour or two at, at the end of the day on like a Friday or whatever to kind of play around with some of these other settings that I've been reading about? And he's like, yeah, no problem. Just let me, let me know what you learn at the end. And I, you know, took that little time, actually started playing with it, found out that you could change amperages on the fly. You can have memory recalls and do all these awesome things and then showed it to him. And it really, um, the, the, your, your boss, you know, your manager, whoever, owner of the company, if it's a large company, maybe just your manager, or small company, all of these guys are going to notice that drive, that uh, willing to learn something for yourself and then help the company on top of that. I really feel like it's, you can only show people, you can talk all you want, but once you show them that you want to be there, you're not just taking up space, that it really shows them that you have that initiative and you are, it's, it's a lot easier than to kind of climb that ladder um, once they know that you're a team player, right? That you're help, trying to help everybody out. And really one other thing that I would say is when, when you're asked to do something, just ask how they want it done. Right. I've, I've, I hear stories all the time of like, oh, do I have to do it now? Da, 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 da. It's, for me, it's like, hey, if they ask me to do something, I'm like, all right, when do you want it done and how do you want it done? And then I'll kind of put my two cents in there after that, if they ask um, how I think it should be done, different things like that. You, you've worked with auto, you've worked with uh, cabinetry and uh, carpentry. Why welding? I really liked welding because it was you had to be very precise. There was not a lot of, if you messed up, it wasn't like with a piece of wood, I could just put a little filler in there. If you messed up with a weld, you'd have to take the entire weld out or you messed up an entire member, uh, you know, adjoining pieces of material. And I really found that with practice, I, I got good, right? It was, it's almost an art to be able to make that molten metal do exactly what you want. And there was, there's a lot of different applications for it. Um, I still work with wood a little bit here and there, but I mainly work with metal. And I just really enjoy uh, seeing something done at the end of the day that's, you know, going to be around for a long time. Now, where did you first learn the skill? Was it uh, during high school with your involvement with Skills USA and competing? Uh, when was the first time uh, you got in a booth and were able to try out some, some of those skills? It was in high school. So I grew up in a really small town um, of like 600 people in the eastern side of Nevada, middle of nowhere. Uh, Pioch, if anybody has heard of it, probably not. Um, and I was lucky enough to have, you know, all of the shop classes. We were the auto shop and welding shop was taught by one teacher. And uh, I was in auto shop, I think one day, and I had a, a, a friend that was in welding and he had made something. I was like, oh, that's really cool. I think it was I can't remember exactly what it was, um, but I was like, that's really cool. So I, I wanted to take, so I started taking welding classes that next year. And then I think I took two welding classes my senior year. So I ended up taking four, um, four you know, that welding four that's last year. So I started doing a little bit of TIG welding and stuff. Um, but we ended up putting uh, like bumpers on our cars and, you know, roll bars and stuff like that. So I just found it really awesome to be able to, you know, implement those things on, on vehicles and stuff like that. So almost all of those little, those things that we learned, auto shop, welding, electrical to put lights in there. And it was, it was really interesting to be able to do all of those things and make something that you like, that was me. I made that right. I just always found that very self-fulfilling. What are some of those skills, qualities, or experiences that you learned in high school that you think benefit you uh, in your current career? In wood shop, there was a very old CNC machine that would, we had to program with MS-DOS, which is like super old programming language. So I remember that was the first experience I had ever had with a CNC machine, and it took forever to program. And then when I got into running that shop in Truckee, uh, it was like night and day. I was like, holy, this is way easier than what I used to do. And then, then working with Lincoln Electric, it even got even easier, and I just was interested in seeing that evolution of how easy that the, the programming of these robots more or less uh, came out to be. And I really think that was the first time that I really used those. And it, I, I look back at it and it definitely helped me. And the electrical uh, for the technician job, uh, trying to troubleshoot different things that can go wrong in these machines definitely helped as well. 
being able to know, you know, read diagrams, electrical diagrams, welding fitments helped me as well because I needed to know where I'm putting welds, how long they were going to be, what type of welds, things like that. But definitely blueprint print reading, being able to read a tape measure was a really big one because apparently not everybody knows how to do that, which blew my mind. Um, so that was probably one of the bigger things is being able to read blueprints um, and having this, some of that experience already under my belt when you actually got an industry really alleviates that those initial nerves when you start a new job. Now, what exactly is a CNC machine? But a CNC machine is a computer numerically controlled machine. Okay. So what that means is you would take a computer program or a computer drawing and it would then create those into, if you were, were to picture a, a graph, right? It would take each point of line in the, the, let's say we wanted to draw a square. You would take each point of those on a graph and then it would make that, uh, the machine itself move to those points and then turn a tool on and off. So we specifically work with plasma cutting. Uh, we also work with uh, oxy fuel. It's a wide range of tools. So you can also do uh, CNC routing on wood, CNC routing on metal, um, different things like that. But nowadays we have robotic um, arms that are CNC machines that actually do additive processing. So it takes the weld and actually builds this thing up instead of cutting it out. So with plasma cutting, the machines I work with specifically, uh, you would get a flat piece of metal, you'd have that program, whatever it may be. It could be a bracket for a car, or it could be uh, somebody's name or a picture. It could be really anything you could draw on a computer, and then it would go through and actually cut that out in metal um, at, in that plotted you know, point system, as long as it fits on the material itself. What advice do you have for students uh, possibly looking at careers that uh, might not exactly be in their hometown and might be moving away. So I grew up in the eastern side of Nevada. I now live in Reno, but I travel back and forth between Cleveland and Reno and then all over the country. But I would just say that what I've learned by being able to travel and then I've, mo I've moved somewhere along the lines of like five or 600 miles from where I grew up, um, it's every place is kind of the same. In, in my personal opinion, there are in every city you go to, you're still going to have, you're going to meet new people. You're going to have new friends. You're always going to have, you know, places to, to go out and eat, things to go out and do. And it almost, they're all very similar in my personal opinion. Now, some you're going to have some nostalgia too, and it's always good back, good to go back home and visit. But personally, if I would give anybody a piece of advice is if they are thinking of going to college, don't go to college in your hometown. Go to somewhere where you know absolutely nobody. And you'll realize that meeting new people and, uh, you know, getting new experiences really helps you in the future, and especially in industry or in, in any type of job. Because if you're in a job where you're meeting new people, it's always going to be you're getting new experiences, new stories, new. I, I'm, I'm still amazed today what people do with our machines, our welding machines, our CNC machines, and the ideas that other people come up with, um, with those machines just blows me away. Tell us about your current primary responsibilities at Lincoln Electric. So my current responsibilities are kind of widespread. Um, I'm, my main role is kind of a two part. I do uh, training. So I train uh, different service providers, other people that work on our, our machines outside of the company. Um, so I would take either new service providers or existing service providers and make sure that they have the knowledge in order to repair or a warranty our machines if there's an issue um, that would entail more in-depth of electrical um, circuits with things you'd have to change cards stuff like that um, and then my other the second part of the training would be training new customers or existing customers on how to use the machine that would be in the CAD design or the machine use itself and basic maintenance things like that um, that is the I would say the harder part of the job because a lot of customers can range from um, retirees, 67 year olds to high school kids, which really pick up on the technology very quickly since they've been around computers their whole lives. Um, and then the other second part of my overall uh, job would be as an uh, application specialist, where I am more of the, the gateway, the checkpoint between um, our R&D team creating new machines and the customer themselves. 
where I have the ability to make sure that the machine meets our expectations um, before it actually leaves the shop for customer sales. So we want to make sure that we get the best product to the customer and it's going to do what it we claim that it's going to do. Um, so we, the, I'm that kind of gatekeeper, I guess you could call it, but I'm more or less the person that says it's a, a go or no go situation for a, a new product before it's released to the, the customer. The nice thing about the Torchmate product line is we have a very wide range of customers. So we, right now we sell our, our biggest seller would be our 44 or 4,800 product line or 4,000 product line, which is a four by four CNC cutting machine. So four foot by four foot. A CNC cutting machine that we've got customers that have these in their garage. We have customers that use these out of a trailer for flea markets, things like that. Um, we've got cut, uh, larger machines. Our TMX table goes all the way up to eight feet wide by 22 feet long. Um, and we've sold as large as some of our older machines were as large as I think 14 feet wide by 30 or 40 feet long. Those would go into shipyards using oxy fuel only. Um, so we have some of our tables um, in military bases. Um, we have them in heavy industry for uh, building buildings. We have some of our Vernon tool machines as well. We'll do pipe, round pipe, um, all the way up to 60 inch diameter. So five feet in diameter. Um, and those are for pipelines. Um, they've also have some of the smaller ones that are actually building um, one of the new football stadiums, I think, in California. So really the industry is immense. You'd be so, so surprised at what CNC machines can do in the industry of metal cutting, welding, anything that pretty much anything that you can think of, we can do, right? So if you're building a house, if you're building signs, if you're building pretty much anything, a CNC machine can come into play. And once again, CNC machines in general, if you start in, C in a CNC metal machine, you can then fairly easily transition with learning a little bit new techniques and maybe some different CAD um, into doing wood CNC or um, a, a, a CNC lathe, right? So the, the skills by learning a 2D CNC can transition, be a stepping stone almost to work with other types of CNC uh, machines as well. That's really cool, especially because it's it's focused in the agriculture and welding industry, uh, but your customers reach out to every other part of infrastructure manufacturing and consumer yep. products. So that's yep. really cool. What kind of education and training uh, is needed in a position like yours or similar in your company? So my pr position that I currently am in, um, I got pretty much all of my training on the job. Um, so I did know a little bit of CAD work and things like that that definitely helped me. Uh, but the biggest thing, if you were trying to get into this, but without getting a lot of training on the job would be, you definitely need to know some sort of uh, CNC CAD um, in order to draw these parts and different things like that. And then some elect a little bit of electrical background. I only work with the lower voltage things. So, you know, 24, 120 volts uh, AC uh, and then 24 volts DC, things like that. So it's not a lot of, it's not very um, electrical intensive but some basic understanding of how electrical circuits and things like that work definitely helps. But luckily um, I was able to do pretty much all of my experience or work um, experience that, that education on the job. Now, what do you enjoy most about your position at Lincoln Electric or what makes you excited to wake up in the morning and go to work or travel? So I, I always like to say the best and worst part of my job is to travel. Right. So I am very lucky to be able to have gone a lot of places, uh, but I usually go to most of those places by myself. Right. So I'm traveling. I'm staying in a hotel room for a week or sometimes weeks at a time. Um, but I am going to these other places and meeting new people. Uh, like I had said earlier, I, they show me what is capable with our machines, things that I may not have ever, ever even thought of. And still to this day, I get just watching some of these things being cut out. I get a little smile on my face. I'm just like, that is so cool, right? We, we program something in a computer and we brought it out to the machine and it literally just cuts that exact thing out. And it's just, you pull it up and you're just like that. That's, that's pretty impressive, right? It just kind of blows my mind what we as humans have created out of these just 
crazy things that people have come up with. Besides the CNC machine, is there any piece of technology that folks going into this industry should be excited about or a sector of the industry that they should be excited about? Uh, I am really excited about like the, the robotics, right? So we're getting robotic arms that are doing something similar to what I'm doing, but instead of removing material, it would be adding material. So it's actually a 3D printer with metal, welded metal. It's really cool. I've seen some very interesting applications for it. Uh, pressure vessels, um, different alloys that would be very expensive in order to do a, a removal process. So if you're going to be a CNC machining process, it's, it's a lot more, it takes a little bit more time, but the cost of materials goes down when you're printing the part and then just doing a final um, external surfacing. I find that very interesting. Um, there's some other things like if you think about it with robotics and GPS, you can almost turn a lot of different things into a, a, a CNC. So if you think of, um, I've seen a couple of companies doing like a farming um, industry using tractors where they wouldn't have drivers, they would program them and then just drive on the, the, at, the at the field itself. It's very similar to what we are doing. You're just taking that tractor is now your torch or your tool and you're moving it around in real space, a lot bigger than a four foot by four foot rectangle. That's really cool. And uh, we call that precision agriculture and welding and manufacturing has just uh, the same amount of relevance within that, making sure that we can uh, make food production effective and uh, yeah. very productive in the industry. What is one misconception that many people have in your position or maybe about the company? Okay, uh, one misconception that uh, I've heard about myself personally is since I do do um, like the the commercials and uh, things like that for Torchmate, um, a lot of customers always thought that I wasn't actually a Lincoln Electric employee. They're just like, oh, they hired this guy. He doesn't actually know the machines. He's reading off of a script and things like that. But I just kind of got cornered one day by one of the managers, the, the marketing manager, and was asked, hey, do you want to be on camera? And apparently I was the only one that would be willing to be on camera. Oh, one other misconception for sure would be that everybody thinks it's really, really hard to use a CNC machine. It's not, not very hard at all. If, if you're willing to kind of give it your, give it a little bit of time and learn the, the CAD portion, the operation of the machine, we try to make as simple as possible. But uh, unfortunately, I don't think anything in the world is able to just, you automatically know it, or that machine is going to do exactly what you tell it to do, even though you have to input it. Unfortunately, we can't put a little cap on your head and think at the machine and have it do exactly what it's supposed to do. You have to learn this new skill in order to draw these things on the computer and then transfer that to actually cut out of the material that you're trying to cut. That would probably be the biggest misconception of our, our systems. What are some skills that you've learned over the years and that you've developed that have helped you excel in a career right now? So the, some things that I've learned over the years is it's good to be curious, right? So I'm a very curious person. I'm always reading different things. Um, and those things do help, uh, even if it's not in the same field, right? you can read something about like that, that tractor industry thing that I had heard about. And I, I always correlated it something similar to this. You can always use different things from outside the field that you're professionally tied to or something that you're doing every day and kind of translate that into um, your industry, right? So there's always different things you could do. Being curious, being very, um, it, it allows you, or I feel like it being curious allows you to pivot in in whatever the anything that you do um if you're able to pivot if your my job might not be here in let's say 10 years but if i'm curious and able to pivot and do different things i know that i will be relevant in at least my company or somewhere else and i know that i'll have a job and something to do down the road that would be the biggest thing that i've learned is being curious and able to adapt is probably one of the best things that you could be able to do I agree. I think cultivating curiosity is the number one thing students could be doing in order to learn about a career. 
Um, so that leads me to this question. If there's a student sitting in the classroom right now and they're interested in manufacturing, welding, and um, some high advanced technology, uh, what do you say to them? How can they get involved? Um, I really do like the, the skills in VICA, uh, things like that. I've, I've gone to a lot of ag classes. Being able to have that, that drive and be able to touch all of these different um, things, like just from personal experience, being able to do the wood shop, the auto shop, the welding, the electrical really did help me. I really loved being able to do that in high school. And I feel like if they know that they like being in that sort of industry, it's you're going to be in that sort of industry. If you have the drive, if you really want to be there, you will be there. I mean, my mom always said, control the things that you can control, right? You don't worry about something that you, you do not have control about. Don't stress over it. Everything will work out in the end. You will, if you get fired from a job, you can't control that. Don't stress about it. The only thing you can control is yourself. Go get another job, right? And if you have that drive and you have those, those skills, you're going to be going somewhere. What advice would you give to a student interested in working in a career similar to yours? If you want to do something, stick with it. Um, you never know where life is going to take you, right? Um, like I had said previously, I never, I never thought that I would be where I am today. Um, I'm very lucky, but I mean, I went from working in a metal shop to being able to be in this interview today. Uh, and really that would tie into kind of everything we've been talking about, staying curious, um, being able to, you know, ask people even at uh, trade shows, because I, I've, I've personally have been to the um, FFA show in, I believe is Indianapolis um, and come talk to us, right? We are a wealth of knowledge. Everybody, I mentioned it earlier, Every, somebody knows more than you pick their brain see what they can do what you can do to be more like them you can learn a lot of things in a lot of different places either by talking to other people youtube is a great thing i mean i've been in different places uh, learning new things that that see that original cnc machine using youtube um there's a lot of things you can learn in places you never thought you might be able to learn them learn something every day, pretty much. Try to learn something new every day. I like that. And I think people play a big role in everyone's career. So the question I have for you is, uh, could you pinpoint one mentor or person in your life throughout your career that's uh, kind of made you the person you are uh, personality wise, but also has helped you advance in skill? Uh, I don't know if I could pick one person, but maybe a few. Um, my, definitely my parents instilled a drive, a work, a very hard work ethic um, that when you were at work, you were 100% at work. My stepdad was also another one that was like that. Um, a couple of managers, uh, the original company owner um, at MD Construction that I was running that metal shop at, he definitely gave the chance, right? That chance. And then uh, there was one manager at uh, Lincoln Electric that definitely helped me as well. He really believed in me. He gave me the chance and then kind of drove me on forward uh, to where I am today. He was my manager and now he is my manager again. So it, it kind of kind of comes full circle. Um, but yeah, there's I can never pinpoint one person. It's always a, a conglomeration. You know, it's a what's the word? What's the saying? It's um, it takes a community to raise a kid or something along those lines. Um, I feel like you, if you're, if you only have one person to look up to that, everybody has their limits, right? You should be able, you should be looking, uh, to more than one person to kind of emulate, right? Take bits and pieces from different people, maybe, um, is what I try to kind of do and then live up to your own expectations. If you could leave one last statement, one last piece of advice for students watching today about welding or your educational career or your career path, what would that be? You never know where you're going to end up, right? And like the, I had said this earlier, um, don't worry about the things that you can't control. That would be, that's kind of my life motto. If I can't control something, I can't stress about it, right? So as an example, on site, um, I've been in some stressful situations where um, out, we shipped a machine and it's broken on site, right? Um, I could have done several different things but I stop, take a breath, um, 
for example, we, uh, we, I, we sold a machine to a company and there was a, a problem with the oxy fuel cutting and it was an oxy fuel cutting machine. That's the only thing that they were cutting with. And since there was an issue with it, I could have stressed out a lot, you know, lost my cool and um, really it could have spiraled out of control, but I pivoted, went to a different portion of the training and said, hey, we're going to get this ordered. It'll be here tomorrow. We'll go to this portion of the training, which I was going to do yesterday, and then we'll come back to this. And if you, if you don't worry about the things you can't control, you yourself, then it's going to make your life easier and everything just more fluid, in my opinion. Um, that and the thing that I've been saying um, the, throughout this interview is be curious, right? That's really, and you never know where you're going to be in five years. You can try to plan, but things change. Be able to pivot. Well, Iggy, thank you for taking the time to share your career experiences with Ohio FFA members today. FFA develops our potential and helps us discover our talent through hands-on experiences, which gives us tools to achieve real-world success. If you're interested in pursuing a similar career path to the one highlighted in this video, there's a couple ways in which you can get started. One option to dive in and learn more is through a supervised agricultural experience. While completing an SAE, you will cultivate valuable employability skills while gaining work experience as a volunteer, paid employee, or maybe even as your own boss. To learn more, talk to your ag teacher or visit saeforall.org. In addition, through career development events, you can put your knowledge to the test. Ohio FIFA offers more than 40 CDEs. Here are a few CDEs that can help you further explore this career path. Ask your FFA advisor for more information about how to get involved. As FFA members, it's important for us to start making these connections and finding future possibilities that align with our interests. I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Ohio FFA Career Connection, which is made possible by Ohio Corn and Wheat. Thanks for tuning in.